be presenting on effect of yttria and aluminium addition on mechanical properties and micrographic feature of iron nickel zirconium inverter alloy prepared by mechanical alloy and spark plasma sintering. Before going further in the detail, we will try to understand what exactly is the cordial. When we introduce some oxides in the metal matrix, it enhances the strength. And that strength we receive from oxides, that is the cordial oxide dispersion strength. Thing. So, what type of oxides we can add to the metal matrix, like some are the example like lithium oxide, aluminium oxide, zirconium oxide, titanium and heavy, hafium. It depends on your structure or the metal matrix which is suitable. Accordingly, its strength, overall strength will be provided to the metal matrix. So, why OTS? Generally, when we talk about precipitates, they have a limitation, like 600, 700 degree temperature. Other than that, they are not stable. For stabling at high temperature, there is something to be needed that are oxides. So let's try to understand what are some of the applications that could help and replacing uh, past already traditional materials. Like in the case of furnace roll or nuclear shielding, specifically in case of nuclear shielding, uh, there is gliding tube which carries carry the uh, 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 that uh, nuclear radiation material and it required to be maintained at high temperature and material should be viable to radiation as well. Accordingly, high temperature ro uh, application roller and spring as well. Uh, further, let's try to understand how strengthening mechanism work. Uh, there is one uh, video over here. It is showing, it is uh, 304 is steel uh, and 10, 10 is standing at 400 degrees centigrade. This is the dislocation movement. Accordingly, in the, in the below here, in animation also we can see the same. So, what exactly is happening? There is a dislocation movement. Somehow, if we restrict this uh, uh, movement of the dislocation, we can strengthen the, our material. So, uh, there are some well-known methods for strengthening the mechanism. We will one by one see uh, with and relate with our study like grain boundary strengthening, strength hardening, solid solution strengthening, precipitation and dispersion strengthening. Okay, uh, so let's come on the alloy preparation. The study we have done, we prepared three different alloys. One is iron and having a 42% nickel and 2% zirconium. And then we added yttrium oxide uh, as a uh, to understand the effect of yttria, and then we added aluminium. Uh, we did a uh, high energy ball mill for 25 uh, hour to make sure that alloy has been formed properly and uh, initial, initial particle size and to reduce the initial uh, particle size. And then we sintered at 1100 degrees centigrade at 60 MPa uh, applied load in spark plug sintering. And then we uh, did some micrographic feature studies like from SEM, TM and XRD, we will further see and then we correlate with the mechanical properties in the nano intensive test with, uh, with the hardness and compression test as well. So uh, let's start with the uh, experimental. Uh, after uh, doing SPS, we measure the relative density of the material. Initially, when it was uh, iron nickel zirconium only, all, or uh, metallic, it was uh, near 99.5, uh, it was almost near the 100 percent. But as we introduced yttria and the aluminium, it is start to decrease. The reason we, behind that is uh, the dispersal or uh, uh, take, taking the reason near the gain boundary, it is not allowing the material to getting, uh, filling the porosity. This, this, uh, this is the reason we we were not able to get a complete, uh, better uh, density as we got in 2% zirconium metal alloy. Uh, accordingly, we can also compare with it uh, XRD as well. In the 2 zirconium added, uh, it was a completely FCCA structure. Uh, we did not find the uh, zirconium peak or any zirconium precipitate. The reason behind it was, uh, it was only 2%. And when we introduced uh, yttrium oxide uh, in that uh, uh, matrix, uh, we found some like uh, uh, ZR2 formation, and uh, uh, we can see here uh, we 
uh, like y for z and v for twelve, and this type of uh, this person in time precipitate forming. We can also relate it with pseudo uh, convex hull to a plot where the enthalpy uh, towards the down we can see having the more affinity with the mat uh, metal mat uh, material. Like if there is an oxygen content in a uh, some uh, alloy, then uh, which chance of which uh, dispersion is for, uh, forming is high. Uh, from this uh, curve we can find and we can relate with our XRD as well. Further, uh, we will start with SEM micrograph of iron nickel zirconium, where uh, we find that uh, uh, in the uh, grain size is uh, 2.9 micron. And uh, this uh, black spot we can see over here, it was uh, taken up by the zirconia and it is on the grain boundary. At, uh, the solubility is very less of the zirconia in the iron nickel matrix and uh, the reason uh, it, uh, it takes that place on the grain boundary. Accordingly, in the case of uh, iron nickel, yttrium zirconium alloy, when after introducing zirconia, uh, so yttrium oxide, we found that the average grain size reduced. The re uh, reason behind that, that yttrium oxide addition uh, found to be formation of several dispersoids, as we saw in the XRD earlier, uh, which was resting in the grain growth of the, um, uh, of the uh, of that metal matrix. Due to which our grain size got restricted and our mechanic properties increased. Here we can also see that uh, uh, relate to that uh, uh, whole, uh, that curve that we talk about. Uh, the position taken by yttria and zirconia, uh, zirconium is same because having the high affinity of uh, because they all three having the high affinity. So the position taken by all three of them are same and making a dispersoids are related are yttrium, zirconium and oxygen based. Accordingly then we added aluminium, aluminium in the uh, matrix and we found that aluminium has a higher affinity, much more higher affinity when, uh, with the oxygen compared to zirconium, nickel and iron. And due to which uh, the formation of aluminium uh, based dispersoids are also found and as well as some precipitate also found to be formed. And due to which uh, number of first uh, the total number of dispersion increase in the metal matrix second and that dispersion uh, increase the strength uh, by decreasing the overall grain size uh, here is uh, that uh, tm mapping this is showing that aluminium uh, and oxygen based and it is dispersed in the metal matrix and which is decreasing the grain size up uh, to 230 nanometers further we will go on mechanical properties uh, that impact due to the uh, decreasing the grain size. Initially, the grain size was two point uh, that uh, from uh, two point uh, nine uh, micron. Uh, accordingly, the, uh, the hardness found to be two point seven GPA. As the grain size start to reduce, it is, uh, that uh, our mechanical properties start to increase, uh, which can also relate with whole pressurization. Accordingly, in the case of uh, 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 nano indentation, uh, we quite find the elastic modulus, and that and this curve is showing the uh, penetration depth. Like uh, the more higher the uh, hardness of the material, and uh, lower is the penetration depth, and that can be related with the hardness as well. And further, uh, in the next, uh, um, there is a compression test conducted uh, at a room temperature, and it was find that uh, iron nickel zirconium bases alloy it did not break even after the 75 percent of its formation. But as we introduced yttrium oxide, what happened that uh, we got some better yield strength, but we did not got a, a good ductility in the material, which is obviously a sudden failure of the material can be expected. But as we introduced aluminium, it is giving the overall strength and viable with ductility as well, and uh, we got a, a yield strength up to 1353 MPa. So overall, we can conclude it in the way. Uh, as earlier we talked the several strengthening mechanism. The grain size, from the grain size strengthening we find out uh, the contribution of grain size strengthening in the whole uh, compression yield strength study. It was uh, in the case of 2% uh, uh, zirconium addition uh, by using the whole patch relation we found that it is 181 and uh, uh, was the yield strength. When the aluminium atria both were introduced that uh, increase in the 
uh, that grain size strength was uh, up to 592 mpa. Accordingly, uh, from this location density also we uh, found using the XRD uh, diffraction pattern. XRD pattern. Uh, from that uh, using Williams and Hall uh, relation, uh, it was found that with increasing the dispersoid in a matter matrix, the localized region got strained, due to which overall dislocation density decreased. Uh, and from that we, uh, we, uh, we found that dislocation strengthening also increased. Accordingly, uh, solid solution strengthening uh, was calculated and obviously as the nickel percentage was in all three alloy was same, that is 42 percent. It was supposed to be the same. Uh, it was near about 261 MPA. And from these all three, uh, we we calculated them all of three, and then we uh, uh, we subtracted it from the uh, value we got uh, from uh, uh, actual experimental data, and then uh, we found the contribution. And here is one uh, equation for uh, precipitation dispersion strengthening, which is based on all one standing is given. Uh, so, uh, this is the contribution of different uh, uh, strengthening in our study. Like in the case of two zirconium, we found that uh, uh, as nickel was introduced in ironic mathematics, it was 42%. It was majorly uh, contributing even more than 50%. Whereas we introduced uh, uh, zirconium in the mathematics, so for uh, uh, that, uh, uh, in which zirconium yttrium oxide in the mathematics due to addition of this persoids, there was an increase in the precipitation strengthening as well as increasing in the uh, dislocation strengthening that we already discussed. And accordingly, uh, when we increase as, uh, added the ammonia, the, the increase of the uh, press, uh, gain size strengthening was 43%, and which is a higher amount of strengthening received in the alloy. And then secondly, it is around 29% from the this persoids. So uh, this is the summary where we can see that uh, what uh, in, from the initially experimental we can see that with increasing in dispersoids we are obviously our dense, uh, relative density is decreasing. Obviously that is not good, uh, uh, but yes on the other hand we are getting something good uh, that is a mechanical property. And uh, uh, another like yttria is uh, increasing the strength in the case of mechanical properties, but we are losing a, a, a ductility at higher rate. On the other hand, when we introduce aluminium, uh, it is maintaining the uh, ductility as well as in strength also of the alloy fine to be increased. And overall, we can conclude that, that grain size strengthening and dispersal strengthening are the major contributor in the strengthening of the alloy. So, thank you. Thank you.